Hi, in this video we're going to be taking a look at part A of problem 2.1.11. It's got a long description here. Use algebraic tricks of the trades for actuaries to find values of various financial quantities with given accumulated values of annuities immediate. Wow, that's a mouthful. What I really want to emphasize here at the moment though is we are going to emphasize algebraic tricks of the trade. These are Algebra skills that you did learn probably in high school, but are probably things you've forgotten. And these are fundamental tricks of the trade that actuaries should know when they are taking exams or applying this stuff in real life. The problem statement itself is not too long, <clears throat> but it involves some symbols that we've introduced in the last couple of videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got, first of all, SN equaling 70. What does SN represent? It's the future value or accumulated value of an annuity, payments of one, space, say, one year apart if the uh, interest rate is given an, as an effective annual rate. And we are finding the future value immediately after the last payment. Another way to think of this is if you imagine you are at time zero, these payments, these end payments, are occurring at the end of the years, with, with the first ones coming at the end of the very first year. I didn't emphasize that before, but that is something, another way to think of it. S2n is a similar kind of idea, except with 2n payments of 1. And we are finding the future value immediately after the 2nth uh, payment. So we are given those things. We need to find values of three things, 1 plus i to the n, i, and S3n. Okay? Now, I want to find 1 plus i to the n in a couple different ways. Okay, in both of these ways, these are going to illustrate fundamental things that uh, algebraic tricks that actuaries should know. Write down what you're given. 70 does equal Sn. And as we saw in the last couple of videos, there's a formula for Sn that in, is related to the fact that this can be thought of it as a geometric series. The formula that sh is going to be a very common formula you're going to need to use on actuarial exams is that this equals 1 plus i to the n minus 1 divided by i. I can write a similar formula for S2n equaling 210, except replace n with 2n. All right, our first goal is to solve for 1 plus i to the n. It may not be clear what to do. You might be hoping some sort of algebra trick will work here, and that is the case here. But it's not completely obvious what to do, and even as you start doing what you should do, it's not completely obvious that it's going to work. One little hint here, maybe, that uh, is helpful is to notice that 70 goes evenly into, two, into 210. 210 divided by 70 is 3. Maybe we should divide one equation by the other. In fact, another good thing to see here is that the i's would cancel on the bottom if we do so. So let's take the bottom equation and divide it by the top equation so that we'll get 210 divided by 70 is 3 equals, we'll get a 1 plus i to the 2n minus 1 on top and a 1 plus i to the n minus 1 on the bottom. These i's here cancel. All right, what do you do now? Again, it may not be clear what to do, but I something should stand out to you here on the top both 1 plus i to the 2n and 1 can be thought of as squares. This can be thought of as 1 plus i to the n quantity squared, and this can be thought of as 1 squared. And that should make something pop, just like that in your mind. Ah, algebraic trick. I've got the difference of two squares. Anytime you have the difference of the two squares, say a squared minus b squared, you can always factor it as a minus b times a plus b. And that's what we've got up here on the top, with a being 1 plus i to the n and, and b being 1. So I can factor the top. And another good thing is that it's going to cancel with the bottom. One of those factors will. So I get that 3 equals 1 plus i to the n minus 1 times uh, 1 plus i to the n plus 1 all divided by 1 plus i to the n minus 1. Now we get cancellation. This factor cancels with this. And we are left with 3 equaling the quantity we want to solve for plus 1. Just subtract 1 from both sides. And therefore, the quantity we want to solve for 1 plus i to the n power must equal 2. So that is the answer to the first question. Find 1 plus i to the n. 
Before I go on to solve for i and S3n, let me solve for 1 plus i to the n in a different way, using a different fundamental algebraic trick for actuaries. And that's to think of this in terms of a timeline. And again, one of this, this once again will be something where it's not obvious that it's going to work at first. But this really is a fundamental skill that actuary should have, is thinking about these present value and future value equations involving annuities in terms of timelines. Now, you can derive the equation that I'm going to show you here uh, using the fact that these things are really finite geometric series as well. Sn is really 1 plus 1 plus i plus 1 plus i quantity squared plus dot 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 plus the last term would be 1 plus i to the n minus 1 power. And this is going to be something similar with one, the last term being 1 plus i quantity to the 2n minus 1 power. If you don't remember that, look it up or look at the last couple videos. Um, so you can derive some of the formula I'm going to derive with that. However, it's better in a sense, quicker, to think in terms of the timeline here. Uh, the S2n, 2n payments of 1, Uh, actually, that's going to go up to time 2n minus 1. Sorry about that. Oh, no, okay, excuse me. Time 2n. 2n payments of 1 um, is the annuity whose future value at this moment in time, I'll circle the whole thing here, is the symbol S2n. Okay? Now, we want to break this up into two streams, two discrete payment streams, each with n payments. There's the first n, and there's the second group of n. The future value of the first group at time n is Sn. The future value of the second group of n payments of 1, equally spaced in time, at time 2n, at this immediately after the last payment, is S also Sn. If we th now this one's already at the same moment in time as that one, time 2n. If we take this one and promote it or push it forward in time another n years, meaning we need to multiply it times the growth factor, 1 plus i to the n, the sum of this times this with this should equal that. And that is true. We can say S2n equals Sn times 1 plus i to the n plus Sn. Now, there's the formula that I'm after. And again, you can derive that with thinking about these things as finite geometric series. But that mode of thought that I just did with the timeline can help you write down the equation without having to bother writing out the geometric series. Okay. That's a fundamental algebraic trick for actuaries that you should make sure that you practice because you will you will need it. And this does allow us to solve for 1 plus i to the n because now I can go back and use these numbers again. I can say 210 equals 70 times 1 plus i to the n plus 70. I can subtract 70 from both sides, divide both sides by 70, and get the same answer as before, 1 plus i to the n equals 2. All right, so two methods for solving for 1 plus i to the n, uh, both involving fundamental algebraic tricks that most people typically don't remember from high school. All right, we're not done. We want to find i and s3n. Um, we can go back up here and take either of these equations and solve for i, because I know 1 plus i to the n. Let's take the first one. Let's bring that down here. 70 equals 1 plus i to the n we already found is 2, minus 1 divided by i, 1 over i, therefore i is 1 70th. Take the reciprocal of 70, about 0 0.014286, about 1.4286% if you prefer. That's i. Finally, now we find S3n. Let me use the same kind of trick that I used here. 
to find S3. And oh well, okay, I could do that in two ways. I could also use the formula for SN. Let's do it in two ways. I could say S3n is 1 plus i to the 3n minus 1 over i, which is 1 plus i to the n cubed minus 1 over i, which now I can use what I found is 2 cubed minus 1 over 1 70th. 2 cubed is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. I get 70 divided by 1 70th. 7 divided by 1 70th, which is 7 times 70, which is 490. And that is the answer. And yeah, another way to find S3n is to think in terms of a timeline. I can think of it as the first 2n payments, future value of that promoted in time by another n years, and then the future value at time 3n immediately after the very last payment of the last group of n payments. I can think of it like this. Now once again use the quantities that we have are given and found. This is 210 times 2 plus 70, 420 plus 70. We get the same answer, 490. Okay, so I think this was a real important video if you want to do well as an actuary on exams and in on the job to learn these kinds of algebraic skills is pretty fundamental um, and so I hope you got a lot out of this video.